Good afternoon, radio audience. And again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, which is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, have an opportunity at any point in time during this half hour broadcast. Pick up your phones, dial the number 281 837 2222, 281 837 2222, with any Bible questions or comments you might have, and we will give you book, chapter, and verse. And listen to the comments as time allows. We have in the studio audience uh, this afternoon four, uh, six members, rather, six members of the Lord's Church. Myself, Henry Stevenson, evangelist at the Goose Creek Church of Christ. Stephen Ozan, evangelist at the Wilson Road Church of Christ, along with Javier Frias, evangelist at the Wilson Road Church of Christ, Brother Gavin Claxton, Goose Creek Church of Christ, Charleston Stoker, Goose Creek Church of Christ, Brother Kevin Green, Wilson Road Church of Christ, and videoing for us is Brother Johns of the Wilson Road. Church of Christ. I uh, want to thank these brothers for their love for God's Word and uh, for the uh, desire to get on these airways and to uh, propagate God's Word uh, to those who, who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. We want to thank all of you uh, members of the church that support us through your finances and your prayers as well, uh, making this half-hour broadcast possible not only today, uh, but over the last decade plus years uh, that we've been on uh, the air. Uh, we've had a lot of people uh, that uh, have benefited as a result of this program, and Amen. our God, not us, our God, gets all of the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Uh, that being said, I want to also mention that beginning next month, November the 13th through the 16th, the uh, Goose Creek Church of Christ will be having a gospel meeting. Uh, that's a Sunday through a Wednesday. We'll uh, talk more about that as the dates get closer, but we'd ask if you would to mark your calendars uh, and plan on joining us, joining us November the 13th through the 16th, and we'll have various speakers, and you'll have an opportunity to question every speaker and their topic uh, on those nights. That being said, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, we'll read this letter, verses 18 through uh, I believe the verse is 24. We'll use a subject this afternoon, how we are knitted together in Amen. unity. How we are knitted together in unity. This is a letter written by Paul to those who had already obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in this text, Paul talks about the Christian family. And he says, beginning at verse 18, Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husband, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters, according to the flesh, not with eye service, as men please us, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of persons. Mm -hmm. How we are knitted together in unity is our subject matter, and Brother Javier Frias will lay the foundation. Brother Frias. Amen. Thank you, Brother Henry. As we just read in verse 18, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. As it is fit in the Lord. Now, we have uh, this generation that we live in today where there's an abundance and accumulation of, of wealth, and there's a lot of independence on the side of women and also men. However, the, a lot of mindsets of, of women are towards the direction of, I will not submit to my husband, I'm not a slave. And that, that comment I've heard over and over again. However, the scripture says, as it is fit in the Lord, and this is a direct commandment from the scriptures, from God, it comes directly from heaven. It doesn't come from the mindset of men. There is no other option, no alternative, no or negotiation with Jesus Christ on this commandment, uh, ladies. And you have to keep this commandment because it is directly from God. It is not a uh, some type of Dr. Phil or some type of suggestion suggested from some psychiatrist. This is a direction, a commandment from God, so you can make it to heaven because you're going to be judged whether you submit or you do not. As it's fit in the Lord, verse 19 says, husbands, 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 love your wives and be not bitter against them. Also, husbands, 
be not bitter against. That's a commandment again from heaven. Amen. That's a command from heaven. You may just look at your wife and you see a, a woman before your eyesight, and you you think because no one's looking and you're alone at your house or at the marketplace or wherever location you you gather with her that you can speak and communicate with her any type of way that you desire. However, God is looking from heaven. Even as Malachi chapter two verse thirteen. Uh, reads concerning covering the altar covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping with crying out, insomuch that he regarded not the offering anymore or received it with good will at your hand. So even if you're giving it at good will in the Old Testament, he wasn't receiving it at their hands yet you say, wherefore? So they're asking the question, why aren't you receiving my gift God? Here's the answer because, here's the answer, because the Lord had been witness He's been watching between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one, yet had he the residue of the spirit. And wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit. So you have to take heed to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of his, of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away for one covers violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. He says it two times. Take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. And so that's the commandment so the males, the husbands can be saved. Because let it be known at the judgment, this will come up on how you dealt with your wife. Uh, verse 20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Now, if your parents come up with a subject concerning uh, going to a congregation that was man-made, a man-made church that comes from man-made doctrine that you don't find in the New Testament, that's where the children must disobey their parents and obey God because they must override their parents if their parents are teaching them to submit to a lie and obey truth. Even as my parents, when I first told them I was a member of the Church of Christ, they were in disagreement because I was raised Catholic and so it took several months, however, they got baptized and I was disobedient to their command or their instruction to go to the Catholic Church and I obeyed God's instruction to be born again of water and spirit and I remain with the, faint, the faithful saints and today they, they are also in the Church of Christ as well due to the diligence of uh, exposing the Catholic Church as, as who they are. So also there's a promise in the scriptures concerning obedience to your parents that, it may that you may live, live long on the earth. And so that's a promise that if you do not obey your parents in the Lord, your days will be shortened. Mm -hmm. Your days will be shortened. Your breath will be shortened on earth on how long you live. God already gives a forewarning on, on you living a shorter life based on how you conduct yourself here on earth with your parents. And so it says, Fathers, instruction for fathers, provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things, your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. So concerning verse 21, fathers, a father can provoke their child to anger or to wrath where they are not to communicate in a fashion where they get angry just because they desire uh, to, to provoke. And verse 22 deals with jobs, servants, obey in all things, your masters according to the flesh. And so not cheating on the time card, not uh, not trying to hide, trying to hide so you won't uh, do a certain task that they instruct you to do or giving the instruction that you were given to someone else to do it mm -hmm. as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fear of God. So you are to do it for God. Verse 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord. The Lord Christ. Now, verse uh, two in First uh, Timothy five, verse two, it says, "The elder woman as mothers." Now, verse one says, "Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters." It says, "With all purity," and so that word purity, sincerity, with all purity, and so it, it happens in the kingdom of God where there are situations where uh, you may see a, a sister in the kingdom, or a brother sees a. A uh, brother sees a sister, a sister sees a brother, they may date, it may work out, it may not work out, depending on uh, the desire for, for each other. However, you are still to deal with them with all purity. You know, as you go to the movies, don't have a plan to take them back to the hotel or take them back to your apartment, wherever you dwell, 
to have sexual relationships because that is your brother or that is your sister in Christ. And so the idea is that when it says with sisters, with all purity, that's the instruction that uh, Paul has given to Timothy through the Holy Spirit on how to conduct with, uh, with sisters, how to communicate with them and how to uh, dwell in the kingdom together. That's how we're knitted together, uh, knitted, knitted together in love and in unity. And so when we continue to read uh, the, these scriptures, you know, the subject of uh, Mary Jane, Jack Daniels, Paulo Escobar, these are not to be your, your friends that you, that you deal with. In Revelation chapter 22, it deals with who we are to, to gather with. In the chapter 22, looking at verse, I want to look at verse 17 here. It says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that hears say, Come. Let him that is a thirst come. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life. It says freely. It says freely. And so the idea is that you may have friends that you used to be friends with before you became a member of the church and they desired that you hang out with Mary Jane. You know, remember the times when we used to hang out with her or you like to hang out with Jack Daniels or you like to hang out with Mr. Pablo Escobar. However, those are not your friends anymore because they'll allow, they'll allow your mind to be weakened and the door to be open for Lucifer to come in and begin the work of taking the riches and the treasures that Christ has given you mm -hmm. after baptism and you'll throw them in the garbage can and therefore you'll have no treasure in heaven because you allow these three to remove them from you. And there's many other subjects concerning how we do with young widows, uh, older widows in the church, and how will we need it together, how will we to communicate uh, at this time. The number to call is 281-837-2222. I want to thank Brother Javier Amen. for a wonderful job on getting uh, laying the foundation of our subject. You yeah. know, when Javier began, he said something that I believe is, is, is very powerful, and I believe it, 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 in fact, needs to be understood by everyone listening to this program. And that is, it, basically all he said is culture doesn't determine doctrine Amen. or the truth. Now, it can be, it, as he mentioned, you can listen to Oprah all you want. You can listen to Dr. Phil all you want. But Oprah Winfrey, Dr. Phil, Dr. Spot, all, all these books that you find in Barnes and Noble, <laughs> let me tell you something, they do not override the truth of God's Word. Now, if a family is going to function as God has designed it, it's going to have to follow the roles that God designed. Now, God has said in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, He has given the structure on how the family should be designed. Everybody has a role. Paul says, inspired by the Holy Spirit, I would have you know, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, that the head of every man is Christ. Brother Javier's talked about that when the parents are trying to make the children uh, continue to be of the faith uh, it, that they don't find in the scriptures. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is now, get this, is the man. Amen. Now, this lady, she may be able to articulate better. She might have more, make more money uh, than her husband does in the home. That does not negate the roles that God has given in the Scripture. Amen. The head of the woman will always be the man, and culture does not determine what the truth is. That's right. And the head of Christ, the Scripture says, is God. And so, that doesn't change, radio listeners, at all. Now, we're talking about the truth on this program. This program is called The Unadulterated Truth. In other words, all we have to give is the Word of God because God's Word is truth. Jesus said so in John 17, 17. Sanctify them by thy word, thy, uh, by the truth. He said, thy word is truth. And so that'll never change. It doesn't matter how mad an individual gets, and, and we understand this. In the secular world, women can do a, a whole lot of things. We, we got that. We understand that. They can be CEOs of, of company, but God has determined that when it comes to the home, when it comes to the family, it is Christ, the man, the women, and the children. And, and, and whenever a home gets that out of order, you're going to find a home that is dysfunctional. Yes. It will always be a dysfunctional functional family. Why? Because it is a family that's trying to override truth. I don't know where this foolishness came from that truth is something that is made by man. You and I, you know what? We don't make truth. Amen. We don't determine what's true. You know what man does? Man discovers the truth. That's it. 
Truth is there, and our job is to simply discover the truth. You know, got this holiday coming up that's called Columbus Day. They, everybody say oh, Columbus, you know, he got in a boat and he sailed around the world. And because of his, his, his voyage, he determined uh, by his voyage that the world was round. You know what? All I had to do was look at the Bible. In Isaiah 40 and verse 22, the Bible calls the world a circle. And so Amen. he didn't discover, all he did was discover the truth. But it was true whether or not he got in the boat and, and went around the world or not. The Amen. truth was, whether he discovered it or not, that this world was round. Right. And so all he did was discover that truth. That's all he did. And so on this program, all we're doing is we are telling you how you, as well as we, must get in line with the truth if we're going to have the type of unity that God desires. There is no unity in a physical family or in a church family when God's word is not leading the hearts of those in them. That's it. We have to develop unity. And Paul told us that we need to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And he gives us the tools in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3 on how to do that. Paul said in Galatians 4, 16, Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Amen. The numbers 281-837-2222. At this time, I'll talk to Brother Stephen Ozan, who will elaborate more on the subject. Brother Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Javier. Great job. Great job. I want to just mention something. I believe Brother Johns is going to help us out with a thought. Look out Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, you'll see the, the trouble with leaders in the church who flirt with the devil and offer the saints something other than Christ. The saints will turn on you and bite you like a snake. Look at uh, Isaiah 8 and 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto withers that peep and that muddle. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living, to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness and anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, some of you who are leaders, especially evangelists who flirt with beat bass singing, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to want more. They're going to get hungry. And they're going to want That's right. a wow. desire for praise dancing. And okay. when you tell them no, I want to forewarn you, brother, especially the young brothers. When you tell them no, they're going to have pockets full of money, enough money to get another preacher because their ears will itch. And you're going to get tired of scratching, as Paul told Timothy in, his, in the letter he wrote to him. What they're going to do is they're going to fire you for not wanting praise dancing or instrumental music to be brought in. And what happens is you're going to come to the other brethren who are righteous and say, well, they terminated me because I stood on the word of God. But you're lying. You didn't stand on the word of God. You furthered with wizards and spirits that peep and mutter. And you sold out your soul to the devil. You traded out God for an idol. And I'm telling you now, especially you young brothers, the saints will maul you as the lions that they are, but they will not be the whelps of Judah. They'll be Satan's lion. And they will turn on you like a mad beast that needs to stay in the jungle instead of in the homes, as many people in society have seen. Once something is wild, it can always go back. You brothers are going to have to stand up and be men Amen. and tell your wives, tell your children, tell the sisters, Tell the brothers that are too old to fight anymore. Tell the young men that rise up. We will read the interpretation of God's word in addition to reading God's word. Because many of you read God's word and you interpret it with your mouth and your heart instead of reading interpretation. Because you'd like to go on the internet and hit print instead of going and researching the scriptures for yourself. Staying up late. Turning off the football game and studying until you fall asleep and your head hits the Bible. It's so much easier to go hit print from some other brother who claims to be a member of the church or wrote some book and he's as false as two left shoes. But the idea is you will find out that the Lord will not rescue you when you fall. Brethren, it's not worth it. Can't give the church poison. You can only give them God's word. The number to call is 281-837-2222. <laughs> Yeah, hey, brothers and sisters, uh, 
I want to make another comment uh, about this uh, this this subject. Uh, Colossians chapter three and verse one says it starts out saying, "If if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God." He says, "Set your affliction on things above, not things on earth." And that's right. When it comes to Christian relationships, yeah. we must abide by the word of God. Amen. He yeah. says, "He says if you want to be knitted, you got we got to listen to Christ." And he, and, and he gives us instruction. He says, on the same chapter in verse fourteen, he says, "Above all things, put on charity." Yes. In that word, charity means put on love. Amen. Then he says, "Which is." The bond of perfectness. Amen. So, dealing with our Christian uh, relationships, we must put on the bond. We must put on love. No and what is love? No. Paul explains it. The same man written Colossians wrote First Corinthians, chapter thirteen, and it says, starting at verse, verse, verse four. Now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here. Yeah, verse four. It says, charity. And go that word again. Love. Suffer long. Yes. And it's kind. Charity, that word again. He said, it envy not. Amen. Charity, that word again. Yes. Yes. It's that word again. It says, vanish not itself. Amen. Vanish it not itself. Amen. Then it says, it is not puff it up. Yeah. That's love. Amen. That's love. We got to put on, if we want our. Christian relationships to remain, we gotta put on love. Amen. I got some more. It says, do it not behave yourself unseemly. That's right. Like the brother said, if you're a brother, you're a single man, you want you want you're dating a single Christian, don't try to don't do not try to lure her to your house. You know what I'm saying? Amen. To 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 have sex with her. Amen. That, that's not that's not godly. Amen. You gotta stay pure. And it says, uh Seek not her own, is not easy provoked, think not, think no evil, think of no evil. He says, and it don't, he said, don't, it don't rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Bird all things, mm -hmm. believe it all things, hope it all things, yeah. and do it all things. Mm -hmm. He said, charity never fail. If we want to, we want our, if we want our relationships to be bonded, we got to have love. Amen. Amen. Number is 281837 We have a call on the line. We want to go ahead and take the caller's question or comment at the time. Thank you, Brother Johns. Go ahead, call you on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to thank y'all for y'all messages um, because they really inspired me to go to the uh, Church of Christ. Amen. Um, I'm a young guy. I'm 32 years old. I'm right. from Washington, D.C. Okay. So. Well, we thank you for the Amen. encouragement, yes. and uh, we appreciate uh, that you have uh, discovered the truth, uh, and hopefully obeyed the truth, and we just hope that you'll stay faithful as well as we unto death. And if we don't see you on this side of heaven, we pray the Lord that if we stay faithful, you stay faithful, we'll see you on the other side. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. Praise God. You know, Paul, oh, go ahead, Brother Ozan. No, go ahead, Brother Ozan. I just want to point out one thing in First Timothy 5, Brother Javier pointed out relationship the church has with widows and how the widows should conduct their relationship. First Timothy 5 and verse 3 says, Honor widows that are widows indeed. Well, he's going to explain. Let the Bible give you the interpreted answer. Read it. Don't try to figure it out. But if any widow have children or nephews with your grandchildren, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite, which is to repay their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. So if a widow should come before the church, even if she is 60 plus years old, uh, the church has a right and should exercise and must exercise do you have any children or grandchildren that can help out. And if those children should be members of the church, we need to go to those children and say, why aren't you helping your grandmother? Why aren't you helping your mother? Not that the church should help it because there are some widows that have no children or grandchildren that will help. And so he continues to say, Now see that as a widow indeed and destined trusted in God and continued in supplication, prayers, night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. This is a wild, older woman that likes to party. And she's not coming to church ready. She's not honoring God properly. And these 
Thanksgiving charge. See, it's not a suggestion, it's a commandment. Amen. That they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You brothers that have children, and you people that are outside of the church of Christ, that have children, you're supposed to pay child support. You get all upset that government is hitting you. The government should hit you. You brought the child forward. Be a man, and if you're a woman that has given your children to help, and you know you still need the help too, or you should have stayed with him and help him take Amen. care of them together. You don't get to live no single life. You're not. You had a child. You gave it to your husband. Well, you still got to help and say, well, he's a man, and it's your baby. Amen. That's ridiculous. You're, you're, you're less than a, a unbeliever. That's what the scriptures say. That's the interpretation. Verse 9, let not a will be taken into the number of three score years under that Having been, the, he says, you gotta be the wife of one of them. You, you can't be running around with boyfriends while you're married, you know, and living wild. There's a lot of saints live wild like that. Jezebel was a spiritual wild woman, but she was at least faithful to Ahab in a physical sense. <laughs> Verse 10, were reported off for the good works. If she have brought up children, if she have lost strength, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. But listen what it says. Now remember what Paul says that. The widow should stay as he single in the Corinthian letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. But look what he says to the younger. He isn't commanded, it's a suggestion. But the younger widow, now this is the command, refuse, that's the command. For when they have began to wax wanton against Christ, meaning they'll want a man, they will marry. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, wanderers, from about from house to house, and not only idle but tattless, uh -oh. also in business by speaking with they are not. Girl, I wouldn't let him do me like that. Go get you a man <laughs> and have some more babies or adopt some. And you won't have time to go to her house and say, Girl, I wouldn't. You would be dealing with your own man, cooking, cleaning, and maybe working too, taking care of all your children and doing your job as a woman is required by the Lord. Read the Timothy, now the first Timothy chapter 2, and realize how your soul is saved. You must perform eternal duties. If you can't have a baby, you've got to perform eternal duties with a person that is childlike because that's how the Lord is going to save you. You are a woman. That is your role on earth. If you don't like that role, then say, well, I'm not going to be whatever I want. You're not going to make it to heaven because that scripture says, I want to read that scripture because there's a lot of evil women that deny that. First Timothy chapter 2. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, not to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in a transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. You see that? That's maternal duties. Look the word up. If they continue in faith, they have to be a member of the church, faithful and charity and holiness with sobriety. This is a good scripture that Brother Javier pointed out to me. Go back to chapter 5 of 1 Timothy. Look what he says here. This is the problem. He says, what? He says, and with all in order to be idle, talentless, speaking things which they ought not. Verse 13. Look at 1 Timothy 5 and 14. I will therefore for the young women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak, Reproachment for some have already turned aside at the same. Now, nobody saying you have to stay at home and be a housewife, but you better take care of the house because here's the situation you've got to understand, ladies and sisters. If you don't like the word of God and interpretation, just remember there's only one other place to go, and that's hell, and you don't want to go there, believe me. The number of call is 281 837 2222. We're going to get ready to wrap up at this point, and we want to let you know if you disagree with these. Scriptures, call next week, please, at the top of the program, and we'll discuss it more with you. No one's trying to beat you up. We're trying to wrestle your soul and let you know God's way is always the best way. Let me remind you of something. There'll be no clubs in heaven. Amen. There'll be no high heels to wear. There'll be no stilettos in heaven. Yes, there'll, be no, there'll be no Cadillacs in heaven. Yes, sir. All the stuff you enjoy now will not be in heaven, but there will be souls of men and women that are pure and clean and the God of heaven will be there. And believe me, ladies and men, you will love it there because God said so. We we'll leave the faithful saints of Romans 16, 6 in the churches of Christ. Salute you. Amen. Because women are saying you've got to perform a maternal duty. you got to take care of someone like you would nurture a child because God is judging you. Can you do what I made you to do? Sometimes women look at that as belittling. Girl, I, I want to live my life. 
What purpose are you doing? Living your life, going out, drinking. I've been on the radio talking about that radio announcer. Drinking. I like drink. I got my money saved. I said, I'm about to die. I spent the lie alone. And then when you get about 80, you'll be sitting out. There's no grandkids. There's no children. There's no man. There's nothing but a cat and a dog and some flowers. And what can that do for you? And they going to die too. You know, the flower, the cat, and the dog. Sooner or later. And you end up with nothing when you could, and then you lose salvation when you could have had the opportunity mm -hmm. to perform the maternal duty because Amen. that is a reward. And the man has to perform the masculine duty Get a Amen. job, Amen. get two if you have to, <laughs> so you can provide and do the best that you can at providing money. You can't give your family everything, but you can give them the basics. Yeah. But I did is people don't want to do it, and that's what the Lord said he's going to judge. I remember he told Adam in the beginning, he said you're going to earn by the sweat of your brow. He told Eve the desire going to be to your husband. Oh, yes, sir. To, to, to man. The idea is she, she has got to have a way in order, in her case, She's gonna her desire is gonna be to serve it. And if she violates that desire, you mean, I'm saying you're not gonna make it. Are you, you, are are you mean you mean tell me she and he and say he and say yo your desire will be for your woman? Mm mm. Didn't say that. That's a good point, brother. Didn't say that, did it? I thought you said man, huh? See that? Mm -hmm. And see that's and that, that's this is the problem that we're facing with this program and when we teach and when we preach at Kroger while we're talking. We're trying to save a soul, and they think yeah. we're trying to tell them what to do. Yeah. We're reading the interpretation that the Lord sent us to say, so your soul. Like I said, it's not, it's not going to be no TV in heaven. I'm sorry, right, brother. I, mean, right. I like cable, too, but ain't going to be no cable TV in heaven. <laughs> you know, I mean, ain't going to be no movies to watch. Ain't going to be none of that. Yeah. It's going to only be what's beneficial to the soul of man. Yes, and it's so. going to be better than anything cable yeah. and his laws and earth can provide. Amen. Amen. And they're going to miss that. Yeah. Talking about I want to live my life. You can live your life in the life and do things the right way. You don't have to get married, but you're going to still have to perform and do. You're going to serve someone like if they're a child because the Lord said, I made you. That's how you are designed. I make airplanes fly, cars drive on the road. You don't, you don't see the opposite. Sure you see no right, airplane man. going down I 10. <laughs> you see no car flying out other than the, the says, one brother Frizz knows about. It. <laughs> it says in 1 Corinthians 11 9, it says, Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for, for the, the man. So yes. that's, a, that's how God designed it. Very tender heart and very loving. He knew the sympathy. He respected Phoebe Holly. Yeah. He respected Lydia. Priscilla Holly. Thank you. He respected Lydia Holly. He stayed in the house. She thought she, if he thought she was a Harley, wouldn't have stayed with him. Yeah. He had great respect for women, but the idea is he also had to tell them what position they had in the church so yes, that he could rescue their soul Amen. and not lose his own. That's Amen. what a real man does. He, yeah. he, somebody, one of y'all will point that out. A real man does not need a woman to the bedroom. That's right. Under the precincts of spirituality. He's yeah. a dog is what he is. A real yeah. man would yeah. never. A real man says, right. these men who take pictures of women knew this is some of them. The lousiest human beings on the earth yeah. that would tell a young woman, oh, no woman to take your clothes off. He's supposed to be leading her to safety, yes, not right. the damnation. Amen. I just wanted to, uh, I got a scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Just listen to the words of Apostle Paul. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, beginning at verse 1, the following, it says, Now concerning the things about which ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Mm -hmm. Why? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Amen. As Javier pointed out earlier, you know, <clears throat> about being closely knitted together in unity, you know, for a man to look at a woman as being a sister in Christ, why would you sabotage that spiritual relationship you have with your sister in Christ by wanting to take her to a hotel to sleep with her? Mm -hmm. Because that would violate, according to what the scripture says here in First Corinthians chapter seven. That's right. If you lay down with your sister in Christ, mm -hmm. you considered as a fornicator That's in it. God's eyes, That's and right. so we have to make sure that we don't treat one another as dogs. That's yes, right. yes. Or as something uh, as a piece of meat, as as some would say. Yes. Because she is. A woman that should be respected That's right. yes. by a man, it w though we are part of the same kingdom, mm -hmm. but we ought to treat one another in a respectful manner and not to look at the other person 
as you know, calling away uh, desiring the, the, the filth of the flesh. That's Amen. right. Amen. 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 Amen.